soon you'll be solving equations with trig functions in them. It wouldn't hurt to talk just a little bit about um, equations in general, just to remind you of what you've done previously in classes in the past. You've had linear equations that had um, some sort of expression. And your goal was to get x by itself. Now, the reason that we know this is linear because the x's in there only have exponents of that understood 1 on them. So that's linear. So what you did is you did your distributing if you had any. Then you worked on getting the x by itself. So on one side, you combined like terms if you had any to combine. And then you move things to each side of the equal sign. So like if I picked this 3x up and moved it, it became a minus 3x. Gone over here. And then if I pick this 2 up and move it, it became a minus 2. And the last thing that you did in any of those kinds of equations was you divided. So this one, the answer would be 13 fourths. So you had linear equations where you just simply worked on getting the x by itself. Then, after that, you had quadratic equations. Quadratic equations were equations that had a square on them. And you had to set one side equal to zero by getting everything over to one side. And then you either use the quadratic equation, the quadratic formula, because this is a quadratic equation, or you factored. This one could be factored because there are factors of 10. 5 times 2, that give you 7. So you set each factor equal to zero and then you had two little mini linear equations that you solved. So if it couldn't be factored, so let me do one that's like that. Let's say it was this one. Okay, so there are no factors of 11 that give you 7. So we had to use the quadratic formula, and it was, um, let's see, minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I hope you remember that. You made sure everything was set equal to 0, and the number in front of the squared variable was a. The number in front of the single variable, the one that has the 1 on it, was b. And the number by itself was c. And then you just simply substituted them into the equation. And then you simplified. So in this case, remember that the plus or minus means that you'll have two answers. You'll add the stuff that's underneath the square root and you'll subtract the stuff that's underneath the square root. So in this one, we have minus 7 plus or minus the square root of 5 all over 2. And there are different ways that we did our answers. If the square root of 5 actually had a square root, say let's say that was 25, we would have done negative 7 plus the square root of 25 would be 5, so negative 7 plus 5, then divided by 2, and negative 7 minus 5 and divided by 2. Since the square root of 5 doesn't really have a square root, it's a decimal, the exact answer would be the one we have there, or we could put the square root of 5 in the calculator and get a decimal and get some sort of approximate answer. So those were the kinds that we had. We also had things where we did things by grouping, and this will probably show up a lot in um, your trig problems that you have. Um, you may have some where you need to rewrite one of the terms so that you end up with four terms. Or you may already have four terms to start with. So if you have four terms and you need to factor by grouping, grouping, remember, is where you group 
two individual pieces and you pull out the common term. So in this first group, we would have 2x as a common term. The next group, we would have 7 left as a common term. The common term here is x plus 3, and we have 2x plus 7 left. And then again, we set each little product, each factor, equal to 0, and we get x by itself. So that's just a quick little review of some of the ways that you've solved problems before. So you're going to be applying these two tree expressions and you're going to be solving equations with them.